March 12, 1938. The Anschluss. The Nazi invasion was timed to prevent the Austrian elections which would have registered the determination of the majority of the people for independence. The Austrian Republic was annexed to Greater Germany without a struggle. According to the program Hitler outlined years ago in his book, Mein Kampf. Herr Hitler declared that this event did not endanger the Czechoslovak Republic, against which he had no aggressive designs. General Field Marshal Hermann Goering made this declaration in even stronger terms. Nevertheless, in Mein Kampf years before, Hitler had said that Czechoslovakia must be destroyed. But behind its natural mountain frontiers, the beautiful old capital of Czechoslovakia was a peaceful and prosperous city with a population of about a million people. On the great Hradzny, the castle hill above the town, were the cathedrals, palaces and Baroque monuments inherited from Bohemia's long historic past. The Cathedral of St. Vitus, a great national shrine which grew up through five centuries, was the heart of this region of palaces and churches. on the Hrajni, once an imperial residence for the Habsburgs, and last rebuilt by the Empress Maria Theresa, was now the official home of the President of the Czechoslovak Republic, Dr. Edward Bench. At the foot of this historic hill, modern Czechoslovakia was putting forth her characteristic effort. Model structures for dwellings and offices arose against the background of the past. These brawny workmen of all the races and religions of the Republic, Czech, Slovak, Bohemian, German, Catholics, Protestants, Jews, are examples of the Czechoslovak democracy as we grew to know it this year. Czechoslovakia's constitution was modeled on that of the United States of America and her general national policy was based on the ideals of the League of Nations and collective security. After Austria had been swallowed up by Germany, the world's attention turned to Czechoslovakia, and the press of the world was anxiously read by everybody in Prague. Here, in the center of the city, in the Wenceslas Square, the newsstands did a rushing business in papers from all countries. Cautions against air raids suddenly became a matter of great popular concern after the Anschluss, in spite of the reassuring declarations made by Herr Hitler and General Field Marshal Hermann Goering, in spite even of the solemn guarantees made to Czechoslovakia by the great powers who were her protectors and allies. There were too many copies of Hitler's Mein Kampf available to make the present German declarations quite convincing. dangers and results of air raids, and in the consequences to be expected from the use of deadly chemicals and poison gas were given in the factories and schools. Workers, women, and children were taught what to expect from the pirates of the air and how to guard against them.
interest in all European culture was mixed with this anxiety for the future. Volka means war, and everyone knew where the threat came from. The bookshops in the center of the town displayed the works of great progressive authors, most of them forbidden in Nazi Germany and Austria. There was no censorship in Prague. New books dealing with the present state of Europe, the dangers threatening all democracies, and the fate of Austria were of special interest, and with good reason. For the Nazi terror sweeping over Austria, as it had swept over Germany a few years before, drove thousands of refugees across the border into Czechoslovakia after March 12th. Tens of thousands came to seek freedom, security, and a chance to live. Jews, Catholics, Socialists, Democrats, Liberals, Intellectuals. A cross-section of the whole Austrian population took refuge here and were cared for by the relief committees of Prague. for their food, clothing, and shelter were provided by the religious communities, the trades unions, and others, with help from the public authorities and from abroad. Thousands of German political exiles had taken refuge in Czechoslovakia even earlier. Some of these people had been here for five years, since 1933. Others had escaped more recently from Nazi concentration camps. Anti-fascists of working families for the most part not Jewish. They had been cared for all this time by their friends of the Czechoslovak trades unions. Their children grew in exile, born refugees. Even so, their parents tried to maintain their connection with the tradition of German culture as it had existed before Hitler.